there. I want to talk to you about hair. I have a bit of a cold, so don't be bothered by that. I might sound a bit weird, but yeah, that doesn't matter. So, um, since that god-awful day last January when I had to cut off most of my hair, um, I've been doing, I mean, I've been putting a lot of effort into finding out how to keep my hair healthy and, um, and well, growing. I've done a lot of research and a bit of experimenting and now I've settled into a regimen of co-washing each every other week and washing every other. Co-wash means washing your hair with no shampoo but only with conditioner. I've been using shea butter I got from Uganda with more or less permission this time and some other products also from like bought online. That's pretty much the only way I can get my hands on Afro-friendly products because, I mean, there's no way in hell I would find those in Avonlea. We have one supermarket and two hairdressers here. Uh, besides, the market for those products consists of only me and Mrs. Lind, so... Uh, I'm also learning to do some of my hair products myself using things like bananas and yogurt and olive oil, black tea, avocados. My real love rolls her eyes and says that there's nothing I wouldn't put in my hair. Like one day I was making myself a sandwich and she came in the quick kitchen and asked me if I was putting the bread in my hair. Like a slice of bread. Like what? What possible health benefits could a slice of bread have for my hair? I ask of you, Marilla. Please tell me. Please? It is time consuming and I've had a couple of setbacks like that time when I got like I totally fell in love with an organic range but it wasn't sulfate free so I ended up eventually just drying my hair entirely even though at first it worked really well but then it didn't. But all in all I really like hair care. I mean my weekly wash days are sort of like these pamper sessions and excuses for a good bath. I just feel like it's so much easier to like my hair and by extension myself now that I know how to take care of it. Through this experience I've come really aware of this phenomenon that I think they call internalized self-hatred that brown kids have. It's just like this thought of not being able to be pretty or important because you can't meet the expectations or the standards of being pretty or important because the standards are automatically exclusive of you and the way you look. What I'm trying to say is I guess that I don't want another brown kid to feel like that and it's not like I can single-handedly stop that but if, if, if you watching this are a brown kid, don't. <laughs> that sounds really stupid. But I just, I don't know how yet, but I want to spread this message of, of self-love to anyone really, but especially us. Because it's something I never thought of and it's something I, like, I've experienced all my life but never really had a name for or wasn't even aware of existing. But when I read about it, it made total sense, like I recognized myself from, from the description of internalized self-hatred and it's I feel like it's important for us brown kids to help each other out like I, I don't know like a big sister thing kind of don't don't feel that you're not pretty and don't feel that you can't be pretty because you can't look the way the society tells you you're like pretty people are like you can't look like that but it doesn't mean that you're not pretty and doesn't mean that you're not important, you know? I still don't feel like I'm pretty, but I think I'm on the way there, kind of. If you haven't seen that yet, you can watch it here. I'll wait.